Hello and welcome to Escape from Mount Backlog, one man's quest to defeat his game's library. Today we'll be looking at John Romero's Daikatana, likely one of the most notorious FPS games from the late 90s, even though it was released in 2000. Now Daikatana has 24 levels, spread over 4 episodes, a ton of weapons, but they're all the same. I mean, and to illustrate that fact, I've put in this little montage. As you can already see, most of the weapons follow the same sort of pistol, shotgun, grenade archetype. There are a couple of exceptions, like that Hammer of Hades, and of course the room clears, but this is my favorite. In the Dark Ages, you get two crossbows, one small, one big, one staff, a second staff, oh look, a third staff, but this one summons Satan revolutionary and of course when you get to the 2030 segment set in San Francisco you get the most conventional weapons except for the Nova Beam and that grenade that kills you for no goddamn reason and now we're going to segue into some gameplay while well, I'll tell you a little bit more about the development of this game now, John Romero completed the initial design in 1997, in March, and he wanted a ton of content. 24 levels split into 4 distinct time periods, at least 25 weapons and 64 monsters. Now, despite this call for content, Romero believed that the development of the game, which began in April of 97, could be completed in 7 months. Let that sink in. Seven months. He wanted to build a multiple hour long single player FPS in seven months. That's less than a pregnancy. That's ridiculous. In fact, John Carmack, his former colleague at id, called the development schedule patently ludicrous. Add to that the fact that Romero didn't have a skilled team to work with. Ion Storm was still forming as a company. They were basically hiring amateur level editors and game designers. I mean, sure, some of these guys were obviously excited. I mean, they came from the Quake level building community. And the John Romero offers you a job? Hell, I'd take it myself. From very early on in the game's development, Daikatana was advertised as the brainchild of John Romero. A man famous for his work at id Software in the development of Wolfenstein 3D, Doom and Quake. Ion Storm showed Daikatana at E3 in June of 1997. At this point, it was built on the Quake 1 engine, running in software mode, i.e. without any hardware acceleration. It looked outdated and unimpressive. It is important to mention that they shared the flow with other FPS games of the era, like Quake 2, the original Unreal, and this little indie game you may have heard of, Half-Life? Yeah. So Quake 2 was the important one here from a technological viewpoint, showcasing as yet unseen features in 3D game engines. Romero realized that they were falling behind technologically. The Christmas 1997 deadline was quietly dropped, and the new plan was to keep creating content for the game, and switch to the Quake 2 engine as soon as it was ready. The game was rescheduled for March 1998 release. The Daikatana team received the source code to the Quake 2 engine in November of 1997, and immediately realized that the switch would not be simple. The code was completely different from that of the original Quake engine, and required them to essentially scrap 11 months of work. The switch, which they initially projected to take a few weeks, was completed in January of 1999. Ion Storm then announced, come hell or high water, the game will be done on February 15th, 
1999. This deadline was missed. But at least they released a demo in March of 1999. A demo that didn't impress. Mostly because it lacked any single player content and was basically a multiplayer deathmatch demo. So by now, naturally, the team was despondent, but they forged ahead, creating a new, more impressive demo for E3 1999. It was going to show the true potential of Daikatana, and it ran at 12 frames per second. Apparently, last minute level design changes caused this sluggish performance. The E3 disaster led to a crisis for Ironstorm. IDOS, the parent company, who had already financed Ironstorm to the tune of 44 million US dollars, had had enough. In June of 1999, IDOS and Ironstorm reached an agreement. IDOS got majority ownership of Ironstorm and two of the founders left the company. After all this strife, delays and financial turmoil, is it really any surprise that the game launched in the state that it did? On launch it was banned by critics and fans for its questionable features, like the limited save system with the save crystals and the AI companions that couldn't find a path to save their lives. So for the rest of this video I'm just going to commentate over some gameplay that I've recorded. Uh, picking up here in the Dark Ages, the Viking themed area of the game. And what we find here is, you know, standard gameplay tropes that you would think of any FPS of the late 90s. Pop out enemies, area damage, and, you know, Oh, that was a nice callback to Doom's E1M1 right there. Look at that werewolf. Here we pick up one of those save crystals that was mentioned earlier in the video. Of course, on the version that I have on Steam, you can enable unlimited saves, which solves that problem that people had on release. I am not sure which patch introduced it, but I'm glad it's there. And we're just going to, you know, continue running through the game. I recorded bits here and there, you know, just to truncate the video a bit. Nobody deserves to sit through hours of Daikatana gameplay. In fact, I don't think anybody would want to. And of course, here we jump to episode 4, San Francisco in the year 2030. As mentioned earlier, this has some of the most basic weapons, but they tend to be the most fun, I find. Uh, it could be familiarity that breeds this, but I'm not complaining. The Slugger, their shotgun in the year 2030. It was my favorite throughout the game, uh, purely because of the amount of punch and the sound design of it. It felt better than the other guns. But not by much. And of course a lot of it is this grey area. And right here I'm going to jump through to the final level. Where you've got some platforming puzzles to get to the reactor. To fight the final boss. Who isn't in the reactor. He's actually at a submarine. Because video games. And the clock also had a nice sound to it. Come to think of it. Uh, yeah, these platforming sections took a couple of tries, I'm not going to lie, but once you got it, you get this real sense of accomplishment if you complete it in one run. Speedrunners probably love it. Don't be so sure. I'll fight you till my last breath. His last breath will be very soon. This is the final boss, Mishima. He spawns behind you, he can do a ton of damage with his sword, but as you can see he moves quite slowly so you just need to circle strafe and shoot him for a bit until he dies. I've sped this part up because it's a 12 minute cutscene, I also did some cutaways, 
Nobody needs to see that animation for minutes on end. And of course, your female companion betrays you because video games. So you shoot her for a bit and that ends the game. So here you are, hero, sitting, meditating in front of the Mona Lisa. Your quest has been completed. You have locked away the Daikatana somewhere deep below underground. And in fact, oh wait, there, there it is, in a glass case. Hopefully nobody finds it. Right guys, so that was my video on Daikatana. If you liked it, please like and subscribe to keep up to date. And I'm just going to leave you here with my favorite sounds. Those bloody mosquitoes. And of course the loading screen. Tune in next week when we look at another game. Something by Tim Schafer.